We're going to be working on a new quilt project today. I really wanted to do a simple quilt. <laughs> I have a hand sewing quilt on the go at the moment but it is just taking so long and my fingers are not very good with hand sewing. They get extremely dry and start cracking and then it gets very painful but I'm very much in the mood for making a quilt again and I wanted to do a really simple one and show you guys how easy it can be to quilt. I wanted to do a really simple, quite classic looking design and hopefully it's going to turn out how I am envisioning it. On a recent charity shop visit I got very lucky and found a big stash of vintage Laura Ashley fabric. This is not even half of the fabric that I found but these are the ones I've chosen to put in my quilt. I definitely find choosing the colours to go in a quilt is probably one of the hardest parts because you have to really be, unless you're just using two different colours, you have to be quite aware of the contrast of the darks, mids and lights. But it's just like a general rule is to watch out for like those three different shades and to make sure they're placed evenly within the quilt. The method that I use is just to sort of squint and see if the colours all look relatively even. <laughs> so I've just been sort of winging this one as I go and I've done quite a bit already. So this is as far as I've got. Up close it looks more like just squares but then as you step away it definitely starts to see the more crisscross diagonal going on. So yes, it's a very simple design and I'm not being too precious about everything. I'm just sort of going for it and having fun with it. Which I think is really important for quilting because you just need to have fun. Otherwise no one would ever quilt. <laughs> so I now need to make probably half again of this size and then maybe a bit more on the bottom or I'm not sure, I'm just gonna keep adding and seeing where it needs more length and height and everything like that. If you want to make the same quilt, I've just cut out loads of three by three inch squares and then I've also got the white squares and then I cut, I think it's eight by eight inch squares to go dotted in the middle. But it's super simple really and then I keep a quarter of an inch seam allowance and this little quilting square is very handy and I borrow my mum's rotary cutter because my one is really bad um, and I can't believe how much cleaner and better this one is. So if you're getting into quilting these two things and a cutting mat are really all you need to invest in if you have the sewing machine and everything. So right now I need to cut some more of the big white squares out. I'm using an organic cotton bed sheet for the white by the way can just use fabric but I had this really lovely it's got a slight texture to it which I really like um, so yeah I've been using that so what I've been doing with this quilt is just adding it on in rows a little bit at a time because you can with some quilts if you're doing the same block you can just do loads of rows and then attach them but I've been sort of just picking out little bits of fabric at a time seeing where they sit best and going from there really. So it's nine squares in total and you have to put the white ones in like a bit of a cross shape. And then I just start placing the fabric where I think it might look good and then after that I will look and see if there's too many similar colours in the same area. So I basically just do that until I'm happy with it and then I take these blocks just one square at a time and I just sort of place them on top of each other a little bit and then I stack them to take over to the sewing machine. Now I'm at the sewing machine and I just stitch them together in rows and my machine foot is pretty much the seam allowance I need, so I just follow that guide. Mm -hmm. 
then once we've got them in rows like this we don't need to go and press it just yet because you can actually sew them together without pressing them so the middle one goes on top of this bottom one and we just want to alternate where the seam allowance is going so if this one's going out then we want these to be facing in which it naturally already is which is great so then we just match up those lines and we stitch it across and then we just do the same with the other row place it on top and just nestle that seam allowance into itself and there we go we have one block and now we need to go and press it so I just really gently press it to start with and then make sure the seam allowance is all facing the right way and then that is your block done and that is so simple isn't it so you just keep making these and then we add the rows together now that I've done those blocks I've got the plain ones in between and I'm going to join them up into one long row and then I can add that onto the quilt now we've got one long row I'm going to go and press that and then add it on to the rest of the quilt here we have the new row that we're adding on and it's so easy and quick to grow this quilt because I didn't, that didn't take long to do this big strip and then we just simply place it on top match up the seams and stitch it down I've finished the quilt top, this is what it's looking like so far. I ended up running out of fabric so I couldn't do quite as many blocks as I wanted to but this will actually just make it a much more <laughs> manageable sized quilt. So I just went and stitched together some wadding because it wasn't quite wide enough and now I'm also going to use this backing. This wadding is fusible so I'm going to fuse it to this side of the quilt top and then I'll pin them all of it into place um, after that. So I guess first thing I need to do is give my fabric a really good iron and then fuse it onto this. three layers now and I'm about to start pinning them together with these quilting safety pins which have a little bend in them so I'm just going to work my way along and add some safety pins in and this is basically going to hold the whole thing into place finished pinning the quilt and now I'm just going to check 
that the back is looking okay. I'm just going to cut this excess piece of backing off, but I'm still keeping a good amount of backing away from the front. Now I'm going to think about what type of thread I want to use to quilt. I have these two threads that I picked up in a charity shop that are just a bit thicker than a usual thread which means they'd be really good for quilting. So I'm going to use this thread and I'm going to stitch down the centre of the diagonals and crisscrosses. I'm not sure if I'll do the diagonals of the plain white. Probably won't. But we'll see how it looks once I've done all of the diagonals down the squares. So now comes the mammoth hand quilting job. <laughs> The next day I've been quilting this morning and I've finished all of the crisscrosses so I've gone down the centre of all of the squares and I've just started doing little dots in between the big squares so I can't remember the actual name of this technique but you basically just add a little knot rather than stitching a line um, I'll show you how I do it. So I just thread up my needle and I fold the thread in half so we've got two lines of thread. Then I find where the centre is and I just go to do a stitch, a reasonably large stitch and then I just pull it through and stop when I have enough to tie a knot with and then I take both ends and I do a double knot to start with to hold it into place and just really pull it tight and then I add another knot it's just a single knot and one more for safety then you just pull up the thread and trim it about half an inch there you go. So I've just got a few more of these to do and then I need to decide if I'm going to do any more quilting. I might quilt all the way around the edge just to hold it all into place before I add the binding. So I'll save that for later because my hands are really sore. <laughs> Ugh, it is hard work quilting. I hate wearing thimbles so hand sewing for me can get quite painful. But I do enjoy it. A little bit. I prefer smocking than hand quilting. You could actually do these little knots all over your quilt if you don't want to do the hand stitching. It is quite a nice little easy technique. Now I'm just going to take out the majority of these safety pins. I'm going to leave the ones right at the edge for now. I was about to go and cut a load of binding and then I remembered a little technique that I saw someone doing where they use their backing fabric as the binding so I just watched a YouTube tutorial on how to do that and I'm definitely going to do that so I think I'll take the remainder of the pins out and then it'll be easier when I fold this back to trim the binding so I'm going to take the pins out so it'll be easier to fold this back and keep the lining out of the way so I don't trim that by accident. I no longer have any pins left and I'm going to start with this shorter edge and I'm just going to fold the lining or backing fabric back and then fold it flat and then I'm just going to trim the excess wadding off and I'll just do the same for the other side. Now I'm going to go all the way around and trim the backing to be one inch wide. 
I'm going to get my glue stick and I'm going to glue along this bit of fabric and I'm going to fold it over on top of itself and then fold it over on top of itself and we're going to add a few pins. I could sew this by hand but I'm going to go and attempt sewing it on the machine. I'm a bit concerned that it's not going to be very easy to sew on the machine because this backing cotton is actually quite a lot, it's got quite a lot of stretch to it. So this might not work <laughs> but we'll see. Okay that looked really bad. <laughs> so sadly we're going to have to hand stitch the binding on. I'm just too fussy when it comes to things looking neat. And I think a binding should look really neat on a quilt, otherwise it kind of ruins all the hard work you've done on the other part of the quilt. So I'm just going to have to hand stitch it and sit here for a while, going all the way around. Okay, more hand stitching, here we come. <laughs> just finished all the binding so that means the quilt is finished Woo <laughs> I always end up losing interest in my quilting projects halfway through so it feels good to have got one finished I forgot to film an outro but I thought I'd show you the quilt finished and I did this fun little reveal video in the garden <laughs> I'm sure I'll put some more photos of it up on Instagram if you want to check those out and yes I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.